Hey everybody, this is Mr. A. Welcome back to another episode of Mr. A's Math Podcast. In today's episode, I want to talk with you about dilations, specifically constructing dilations on the plane. So you're going to need to have a protractor. Actually, we probably won't need it for this one. We're going to need a straight edge though, and of course a compass and some couple of pens. I like to use a few different colors. So the first one we're going to take a look at is a dilation by a scale factor of 2. So since that scale factor is larger than 1 in absolute value, we know this is going to increase the size of the shape. So if we take a look at triangle ABC, we're going to dilate it by a scale factor of 2 with D being the center of the dilation. That means that all three of these points are going to be pushed away from D under this dilation. How far? Well, twice as far as they are now. So you can kind of eyeball from D to A is there, so it's going to take us to there. All right, D to B. B looks like it's going to end up inside the triangle and D to C is going to double to somewhere along there. So the way we figure out exactly where the dilation places those points is we're going to start by drawing rays from the center of the dilation out through each of the vertices of the triangle. So if I set up from A to D here, and I can go ahead and draw a ray. I like to do this dotted because it's not really you know, part of the picture. It's actually part of my construction lines. So this is something I'm going to use as a reference point, but it's not necessarily part of the beginning or the end of the picture. So I like to put them dotted for that reason. And C will go this way, from C to B, oh, excuse me, C to D. Okay. So the reason I have these lines drawn is that the dilation is going to push each of these points away from D in a straight line. So point B prime has to be somewhere along the line DB. Point C prime has to be somewhere along the line DC. And point A prime has to be somewhere along the line DA. Or really, I should say ray, but lines extend forever, rays have an endpoint. It's not a big deal either way. So how do we locate where the points are? Well, if I know that the distance from D to A has to double under a scale factor of 2, I'm simply going to take my compass, measure out the distance from D to A, and then I'm going to place the compass on A and place a little mark. So I just duplicated that distance from D to A right here from A to what's going to be A prime and that'll be my A prime point. I'm going to do exactly the same thing from D to C. So I'm going to place the compass on D, open it up to C. All right, so I'm going to take that distance, try to be as precise as you can, and I'm going to take that distance and duplicate it by bringing the compass to C and putting a little arc. I'm going to do exactly the same thing from B. So D to B, this one's a little bit closer, so I'm going to get the compass in there from D to B. And now when I place the compass on B, notice that B prime is going to end up inside the original triangle. That's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Sometimes that'll happen with a dilation. You can imagine if I had dilated by a larger scale factor, instead of two, maybe three, that would have pushed point B to somewhere about there. Would have pushed point A, that's one, two. So a third level would take A prime to about there. And C prime, that's one, two. This is our C prime. Third one will put it somewhere over here. But we can go ahead and label these points. This is my C prime. This is my B prime. This is my A prime. And we can go ahead and connect those. Now, you can use, of course, one color. I'm using red just to show that this is the new triangle after the dilation. This is the image of triangle ABC. And one thing that's worth noting is that since this is a dilation of scale factor 2, right, all of these sides, all the sides, are in the ratio two to 1 to 2. Right, if we look at the length of side AB compared with A prime B prime, A prime B prime is clearly going to be double AB. Same if we look at B prime C prime to BC, that's going to be twice as much as BC was, and the same for AC. However, the area of the triangle, right, area of triangle ABC compared with the area of triangle A prime B prime C prime, do you know what the difference is going to be there? It's not going to be double. See, we doubled all the lengths. But area is a two-dimensional measurement, whereas length is just a one-dimensional measurement. So if you can think about just a square for a simple example, area of a square is base times height. Well, if you double the base and you double the height, now you've doubled both sides of the square. Two times two is four. So you're actually going to increase the area by four. And the same thing's going to happen here. Even though we doubled the length of the sides, I doubled the base of this triangle, and I also doubled the height of the triangle. So the ratio of the areas is actually going to be one to four. It goes by the square of the dilation. That's something important to keep in mind. 
Now taking a look at triangle EFG over here, we're going to do the same idea. We're going to dilate EFG with respect to point P this time, but now we're going to use a scale factor of one quarter. So a quarter is actually going to reduce the image. It's going to be one quarter the size in terms of this length of the sides that it used to be. So GF is going to get only one-fourth as long, EF is going to become one-fourth as long, same thing with GE. And just like over here, when we dilated by two, it pushed those points away along the line connecting the dilation and the point. The same thing is going to happen here, except now instead of pushing the points away, it's going to draw them in. When you dilate with a scale factor whose absolute value is less than one, what it does is it pulls the points in towards the center of dilation. So G is going to head towards point P. It's going to move towards that center of dilation. How far? Well, G has to end up one quarter of the distance it used to be. So if that's half, half again. And that's actually a pretty good hint about how we're going to do this construction. We're going to move G from here. That would be halfway. That's half again. We're going to be using bisectors to construct this. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those other dotted lines in from point P up to the other two vertices. So I'm going to draw it to F. And I'm going to do the same from P to E. So these three points, E, F, and G, are all going to be pulled towards point P, and they're going to end up only one quarter of the distance away. All right, so this takes a little bit more work than this dilation, because here we already knew the distance. We were just doubling it. Here we have to cut things in half. So the way we're going to do this is actually by doing a perpendicular bisector construction. So if I want to bisect from P to E, I'm going to place the compass on E, and remember you have to open it up more than halfway, because you're going to make these arcs top to bottom, and you need those arcs to intersect. So when you go to point P and you make the same arc, we're not going to change the length of the compass, those two intersection points are going to show me the center of PE. What I've just created is a perpendicular bisector. So this point right here where they cross, that point is the midpoint of PE. Now, if I was doing a dilation of scale factor 2, that's where point E would end up, halfway towards the center of the dilation. And we're going to do exactly the same construction with these other two here as well, And we'll, before we go any further. So let's see, I'm going to open up from P to F, more than halfway, that looks okay to me. All right, so those two points are going to indicate the perpendicular bisector of PF. So that's that intersection right there. And the same thing with GP. Compass open more than halfway. That looks all right. Oh, see what happened this time? My one arc didn't quite cross the other. That's all right. I'll just go back to the point, extend that arc a little bit. So I make sure I get the right intersections. Now the picture's getting a little bit busy. You got to be careful. Here's the one arc. So I'm connecting this line, or this intersection, I should say, with this intersection over here. So when you're doing these dilation constructions, particularly by a smaller than one dilation, right, this is a quarter in this case, you have to be careful that you keep, keep all the lines in sync because there's going to be a lot of things going on. So here I have the midpoint of PE, the midpoint of PF, and the midpoint of PG. Now again, if I was doing a dilation by a scale factor of a half, here would be my new triangle. Right here would be E prime, this would be F prime, and this would be G prime. But since I want to go by a quarter, I have to cut everything in a half again. So to do that, I'm simply going to repeat this process. From P to the midpoint, I'm going to place the compass on one point, I'm going to open it up more than halfway, and I'm going to yet again do a perpendicular bisector construction. So I'm going to go top to bottom on one side. Without changing the compass, I'm going to go to the other side, place that arc. So now I have the quarter way mark for that segment. Right? So right here is going to be a quarter of the way across PE. That's half. That's half again, so that's one quarter. That's what I'm going to be looking for. I'll do the same thing over here with PF, the original segment. There's the midpoint. I'm going to open up more than halfway. Now you can see what I'm talking about here. There's going to be a lot of lines, a lot of arcs. You have to be very careful to keep everything inch straight. So these are the two arcs that I just made here. I'm going to connect that intersection with that intersection. And that will give me the intersection right there. Right? So that's my one quarter way mark for PF. And I'll do the same thing one more time from the midpoint of PG. Again, compass open more than halfway. 
One trick to try to keep the picture from getting too messy is if you don't open the compass up more than much more than you have to. Notice I'm trying to sort of cut it close each time. The closer you keep those arcs, the less the more compact they'll be. They won't spread out too much. This is another one where I have to be very careful. Here's my one arc. I'm going to follow it. Right there is the intersection. See the other arc coming in? So you have to make sure you get the right intersections, otherwise you won't be finding the perpendicular bisector. And once again, I'll connect those. Right there is the one that I'm looking for. Right? So that point right there is going to be my half quarter way mark. So here are my three images. This is E prime, right? This is F prime over here. And G prime is going to be right here. So I can go ahead and connect those. Okay. So again, how is this construction working? We start with PE. We want to move E to one quarter of the distance away from P that it used to be. So we find a bisector, perpendicular bisector, that's halfway. And then we take the segment that's left and we bisect it again. Now we're at a quarter. Same with F. We go to the midpoint and then again we bisect to get to the quarter. With G, we bisect once to find the midpoint and then again to find the one quarter mark. Now let's talk about ratios for a moment. This triangle E prime, F prime, G prime is only one quarter the size of E, F, G if we're talking about lengths. That means that the ratio of E prime to F prime, uh, excuse me, the ratio, ratio of E prime, F prime to E, F is going to be one to four, right? E prime, F prime over E, F is one over four because we dilated by one fourth, so this is four times the size of this, or this is one fourth the size of this but the area is not going to be one-fourth. What's the area going to be of this triangle? If I cut each side by a quarter, you know, or I cut it into a quarter, so that means I cut the base of the triangle into, into one quarter of what it used to be, I cut the height of the triangle into one quarter of what it used to be, that means that it's a quarter times a quarter. So how does my area compare? Well, the area of triangle E prime, F prime, G prime, is only going to be 1 16th the area of triangle EFG. It's going to go by the square again. Since I reduced everything to one quarter of the original size, my area is only going to be 1 16th of the original size. And it's actually kind of a fun activity. You can graph some triangles on graph paper, do the dilation, and count boxes or count area, you know, use base times height, calculate those areas, see what it works out to be. So that's all we need to do for basic dilations. In another video, I'll show you how to dilate by things like two-thirds or five-eighths or something. But if you're just going in multiples to go larger is easy. Cutting in half or half again, you're going to use perpendicular bisectors. So I hope that helps. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, comment, and uh, ask me if you have any questions.